And headlining this batch is the Knicks and the Nets, which I was asking Matt, our producer, who's a Nets fan, if this is a rivalry matchup. And I think the resounding answer is yes. Jenks, what's the best rivalry you've ever been a part of? Well, obviously, I would say Texas, Oklahoma, because when you're talking about college football, that's about as good as it gets. And I will say that it is an experience that is different than any other any other rivalry just because of how unique it is where it's played at a neutral site and you have one. It's not like one side is Oklahoma and the other side is Texas. You have one half of an oval that is Oklahoma and the other half of the oval is Texas and you've got the state fair going on outside. So it's just different than anything you've ever seen. In fact, Bo Schimbeckler, the legendary coach at Michigan came down, watched this game. And this is a guy who's been a member of Michigan, Ohio state rivalries forever and ever and ever, you know, obviously he's not alive now, but back in the day. And he said, this is the most intense rivalry I've ever seen. So that someone who knows rivalries in college football as well as anyone to be able to say that, and you can look that quote up, I'm not making that up, then I certainly think that speaks to the intensity of it. But also, there, I absolutely acknowledge when you're talking about the Iron Bowl, if you're talking about Carolina and Duke and basketball, there's a ton of great rivalries out there. I don't think they're nearly as prevalent in pro sports. Maybe like the Celtics and Lakers back in the day. Even now, there's, there's a little something to that, but that's part of the fun of it all. I think every great rivalry thinks that they are the best rivalry. Yes. Because everybody who is a part of like UNC Duke, they'll say, oh, bar none is the best rivalry in all of sports. And if you look at somebody who is a part of Red Sox Yankees, they'll say, oh, no, have you seen the ALCS and some of these historic performances? Ours is the best rivalry. And here's the thing. They can all be great. Like, they don't need to be, you know, number one and number two. But that's what our society likes to do. We like to put things in lists and keep things ni uh, nice and tidy. But when it comes to betting, is this a part of your handicap? Because not only do we have Knicks Nets today, we also, mm -hmm. I believe, have Auburn, Alabama, the Iron Bowl of basketball. Oh, yeah. Do you think that there is a place for this uh, between all the numbers and stats and trends? Yes, no question. A rivalry game in college sports in particular. In pro sports, a little bit, sure. There are certainly teams that don't like each other and teams that have a history playing against one another. Now, I think this was more prevalent back in the old NBA, and I'm going to sound like an old head here, but this is the thing I miss about the NBA, is that teams and players hated each other. These guys did not like each other. They didn't want to play with one another because they wanted to beat the hell out of each other. And it's not like that anymore. In the NBA now, guys are Everyone like, Everyone hates the Grizzlies. That's true. But who is the Grizzlies' <laughs> primary rival? Is there one team that is the, the Warriors? Grizz, maybe the Warriors? It's pretty yeah. one-sided. That's probably, yeah, and that's not even a rivalry. It's just these no, young guys who are mega talented talk a lot of smack. But no, you, you make a good point. No one likes the Grizz. They're very brash. They talk a lot. But they haven't won anything. But ultimately, if you're going to have a rivalry, you have to have – like the Celtics and Lakers, they were both winning championships. So that was a rivalry because these guys were all over each other. They couldn't stand each other. They had two of the greatest players to ever play the game in Bird and Magic, and they were both winning titles. So, yeah, it's a rivalry for today's NBA, but the Grizz haven't even won a Western Conference title. So, yeah, I, maybe I factor that in if, if the Grizz are facing the Warriors, but ultimately I put more into it if we're talking about college sports because certainly Alabama-Auburn on any playing field is a rivalry. I want to talk about this for a second because I hear okay. this argument all the time that all of the players love each other and they all played AAU together and there's no ferocity in the NBA mm -hmm. anymore. Let me tell you, some of the superstars in the NBA, it may not be rivalries between teams, but there's certainly rivalries between players. Some of the NBA superstars are some of the pettiest guys you'll find. Oh, sure. And that's including the real housewives on Bravo. Like, look at huh. Kevin Durant. He is one of the best, most talented basketball players on the face of planet Earth, but yet he's still doing Twitter wars with people, mm -hmm. even against teams that he wasn't even playing in the matchup. Like, remember him going at Joel Embiid, and Joel Embiid had this long hype video of him doing, you know, the suck it move from, you know, mm -hmm. 1990s wrestling. So, yes, I think the rivalries aren't as great as they used to be when it comes to a team aspect, but I think it's kind of lazy saying that, you know, there's no anger and no drama and no fight left in these NBA players because I don't think it's true. 
Oh, no, I'm not saying that at all. This is, see, this is a fallacy that people fall into. They're drawing lines and they're saying, oh, it's lazy to make this argument. It's not like that at all. Well, yeah, of course not. We're not talking about black and white here. We're talking about degrees and levels to things. There's always going to be rivalries in the NBA. There's always going to be rivalries in any sport whatsoever. That's the nature of competition. But compared to how it used to be, it's not close. So, yeah, you, you, nobody. I'm not saying at all that there are players that don't like each other. Patrick Beverly doesn't like anyone. The Warriors don't like the Grizz. <laughs> LeBron doesn't get along with everyone. However, back in the day, these teams, Malice in the Palace, does anyone remember that? Does anyone remember yeah. Robert Parrish once in the 80s threw a punch at a Lakers player? Threw a punch. The, I think it was Didn't a Draymond player. Green punch one of his teammates? Yeah, but that's, but that's not a rivalry. That's just Draymond Green being Draymond. I'm just saying that I'm not, I'm not advocating the idea that there's no rivalries anymore. But certainly, if you compare to past eras and past teams that didn't like each other past rivalries it's not nearly the way it was but yeah of course rivalries and competition exist I'm not saying that at all I just think we hear this argument all the time and a lot of it is I'm not going to say revisionist history but people romanticize like the old NBA they say oh well they don't play defense like they used to well they also didn't have the offensive talent like they do in today's NBA so yes the NBA is different but I don't know. I'm just tired of, you know, older people just saying, well, I wish it was the way it used to be, where they were throwing punches down low. Like, yeah, I would like to see some defense, but I also want to see people scoring and highlights. And, you know, Steph Curry's changed the game, I think, for the better. Well, sure. Well, I, this is when I go back to the gray area of things. Like, I don't mind more offense. It's, it's, it's exciting for the game. But also, when you talk, there was plenty of offense. Dude, Michael Jordan would score 40 points a game. Seriously. Because yes. the rules are different. We know. He's the, the greatest ru- player of all time. Like, obviously. No, but, you- but I'm just saying, across the league, I think the offense is better. Well, it is. Of course it is. But also, the rules have changed. Like, the rules are different. So, the rules have been changed and shifted in the NBA where you can't hand check anymore. Okay? So, there are rules that have made it e- They don't – they're – Fouls are so much more ticky-tack than they used to be. You could get crushed going down the lane, old school NBA. It was like, whatever. That's just, that's part of the game. It was a physical game. So to lighten the load on the players and to create a more palatable product, a more pleasing product, they loosen the rules. So it's much easier to be an offensive player. You have more scoring now than you ever had, had ever in the history of the league. It's not an accident because more offense, more shots from the outside. It's more exciting. People like to see that. So I tend to think, yeah, I like more offense. I wish there were more defense because defense is a part of the game. So I, I don't say, oh, I want it to be like it was in the 80s. I like more offense, but also you can have that balance where you're also playing more defense. And Matt makes a very good point in the chat. This is across the board in hockey, in baseball, in football. Football used to be a running league. Now it is a passing league. More offense brings more eyes because people love to see points. They love to see scoring. They like to see people put the ball in the net or throw touchdowns, whatever it is. And so that's just a part of how we've evolved in sports and how viewership has evolved. People like points. That's why in sports betting, why do people always bet the overs? They want to see points. Yeah. And I'm one of those people. So I am just saying that we hear this argument all the time of people like romanticizing old NBA and there are good things to new, new age NBA. And I know the defense really isn't there during the regular season, but I think it's just people don't really play defense in the regular season that much because the urgency is not there. All of these guys are saving all of their bullets for the postseason. But also, in yesteryear's NBA, did we see so many seven-footers and centers who were so skilled? Did we see Nikola no. Jokic on a, a daily basis? No. Dirk Nowitzki changed the game when it came to big men shooting threes. So I think there are things to today's NBA the people just kind of gloss over because this is what I'm getting at. It's just like I listen to NBA talk radio and all they talk about is like, oh, I wish they played defense like they used to. I and do. they're right. But I just feel like this is an overhashed argument that I'm tired of hearing because like you said, it's not just black and white. There are levels to things. So I think you could make a case for both sides. No, you absolutely can. And I don't disagree with that. I I just think that there need, balance is the key for me. 
I don't like to see these games where it's like, oh, this team won 141 to 138. It's like, come on, guys, what are we doing here? Play a little bit. of And guys don't play defense. So that does bother me because you can make a name for yourself. Marcus Smart for the Celtics, one of my favorite players. Why? Because he is a defensive specialist. He is a part of a team that's close to winning a championship. Giannis Adetokounmpo, one of the greatest players on the planet. What is he great at? He is an incredible defender. So I'm not saying we need to go back to having games of 82-78 when you saw a bad basketball game in the 80s, early 90s, it was a bad basketball game. I do not dispute right. that at all. But you can, make a, you can make a career for yourself in the NBA being a good defender. And I just wish we saw a little more defense with the offensive output that makes the game more exciting. Well, I think a lot of it hinges on the effort, too. Because defense, half of it's effort. And we just mm-hmm. do not see the effort in the NBA on a daily basis. But that is not... I don't even know if it's on the players. I feel like it's on the schedule, and it's like everybody's like, well, it's a back-to-back. I'm not really going to give it my all. So I think that's more of a testament to the NBA. 